Swinburne University of Technology. Easy to do it. So thanks again for, for having me uh, having me today. Um, I think it's a it's a really interesting topic, and it's a and a topic that um, it's it's got a lot of challenges about it. And I think when we um, when we think about the flip classroom, there's there's a there's a continuum of where it can operate, um, and the definitions that you'll see out there will be at each end of the each end of the continuum. So it's, as, as we go through today, sort of sort of think, okay, well, if I was to start somewhere, where would that be? But then if I was to be at the end goal, where would, where would that be? And how would we sort of as an institution and, and educators evolve, evolve over time? Because I think it's fair to say um, in higher education, how many educators have been trained to be educators? Just you have to pick up on your, on your comment before about I have to ask the question, do you need a degree in education before you become a... So if, so if, you're, asking, if you're teaching out to, um, to students and, and so forth? I'm actually part of the DE division and all of our teachers have to have a, a um, basic um, teaching qualification. Fantastic. So Cert 40 A E is the current iteration, mm. but more than likely our teachers would be higher qualified than that. Great. Right. Yeah. So I think it's and, it, and it's fair to say as we're as we're, as as you know, I think that that role of the educator is evolving um, from being the, the the person that that is the the, the gateway to, to content and and will 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 we'll deliver that to students to someone that's trying to to facilitate a learning experience and they're obviously very very different um, different roles. So I guess our biggest challenge is how are we helping helping our educators to to evolve through the process. So thought okay. Quick quick disclaimer. Um, yeah, I think obviously the flipped classroom involves videos, um, but it is not just about watching videos as homework. Yeah, there's a lot, uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot to it, um, and it's it's also not just educators making their own making their own videos to, for learners to watch at home. Obviously, that's that's a component of it. But as we explore more, to pick up on some comments about those that didn't didn't look at it and, and stuff like that, how can we start to wrap wrap more around this this model so that it's that it's really uh, really part of the part of the framework. So quickly, I was going to quick agenda here, and I'm very interested in any other objectives that you'd like to get um, to get from this session. So we'll quickly just have a quick look at um, some of the. Uh, the uh, John just alluded to sort of the active and passive um, passive learning. Um, I gave you the thirty the, the the thirty second video. I've got a two minute video on what is a flipped classroom. Another one. I thought, oh look, let's let's give it a go. So we'll, we'll pull out a few videos a uh, few videos today. Then we're going to have a bit of a look at um, what is the flipped classroom in, in Blackboard. I have a list of names here of, of those that have uh, succeeded very well in my course. My course here, so we'll uh, we'll use those uh, we'll use those people uh, very 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 soon. Um, then we'll sort of have a think about well, what what are some of the ways that we we can bring content um, into our flipped classroom um, using OERs, using using all these uh, using all those sorts of things. Um, and I think this is one of the biggest challenge challenges is, okay, we've got the flipped classroom. We're getting our students ready. What does face to face time look like? Um, and that's, I think, the challenge. So we'll come back and have a bit of a chat about that uh, in a little bit. So just, can I just confirm, John, what time are we expecting to finish this part of the session? Um, Obviously you've got more. 3.30. 3.30, okay. So I'll, we'll, see, we'll see how we go. Don't think we'll need that much time. We'll give it a, we'll give it a go. So if I was to uh, look back to everything, you know, if we, if we think about everything that we... Hey. If we think back to everything that we've, we've ever learnt, um, oops, sorry. What? Oops. There we go. I'll make sure I don't. Yep. I'll put that, stick that in there, so it works. Works better. So look, I think you know the num the numbers on the left hand side debatable. Uh, we can we can debate that, but I think we we all we all we all would agree that you know if we if we sit there um, and and read something versus you know hearing hearing some words, um, you know it's obviously a, it's obviously a passive form of learning. You know, our ability to to take in and contextualise what that is about there there and then is is obviously harder to compared to say coming to to present something or or doing a doing a uh, you know, a dramatic presentation or or working in a working in a focus group where we're, where we're think taking uh, think think tanking ideas we know that that obviously when we're in that mode of active learning we're able to to re retain and also then start to to contextualise I guess where, what this is meaning to us far more far more quickly. So very quickly, I, I was looking at um, uh, the University of um, Sydney, and I will share these PowerPoint with you guys. So there's all, all, all the links uh, links are in here. So obviously they've they've defined uh, they've defined active learning as obviously 
involves you know involves students in doing things and thinking about what they what they are doing. Um, you know, it can obviously include you know discussing discussion, critical thinking, um, problem problem solving, uh, problem solving, etc. Um, many many studies indicate that students learn better from active rather than passive learning. Active learning strategies result in meaningful learning for the, for the learner and thus are an important component to consider when um, developing a unit of study. And so they, they've also defined, you know, obviously, uh, the, the, what, what active learning is, is effective to, to, you know, to obviously the, to, the, for the motiva motivation and engagement of, of students in a particular, in a particular area of, um, of study, study um, sort of getting them to be to head off and start start planning their own destiny. Start looking looking around at you. You've seeded some ideas. Well, how can they now go about um, about understanding that more? So you're sort of getting involved in research and and so forth around those around those particular particular topics. So I think it's fair to say that you know as as we're looking at it, all of our learning experiences, you know, we we want to ask, you know, was it was it engaging? And um, Josh was it? Yeah. yeah, Josh was sort of talking about the. Um, the Prezi, the Prezi one, and you're in a classroom, working collectively around designing that, and you sort of walked away and said, "Yeah, that was really, really engaging." And you might have had another, another, just a, a lecture of some form, and oh, okay, look, I didn't quite get on the the train that was was here. And so we start to obviously want to sort of understand how we can get our students to that to that position, and and where do where do these things ha where is the most effective place for these uh, these uh, components to to happen. So I mentioned a quick video, so let's go and have a look at uh, this first, uh, first three minute and 23 second video. Back to the, uh, back to the slides. So I just thought uh, quickly, and, and the, the online course had a couple of things. So, so when we think about, you know, what, I guess let's start with what isn't, isn't the flipped classroom. You know? so, so it isn't, you know, obviously online videos are a, are a core component of how we can, how we can articulate some ideas, but it's not just, a, just about those. Um, and it's absolutely, you know, every, I've had some teachers say, but well, once we've got all these and sort of it's all robot systems doing it, well, what do I do? And I think, well, the face-to-face -face part is, is, the, is the critical, uh, the critical, critical component. Um, and, and obviously, uh, we can you can look at say last semesters of um, uh, lectures and, and so forth. But obviously, just just pu putting up a lecture up there is probably not really going to 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 achieve, I guess, the objectives of how do I really quickly get my students um, on top of a, a of a concept so that then we can come to class and, and start uh, start discussing discussing it. So it is, it is obviously a means a means to increase um, increase teacher contact time and make sure that 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 face to face time is as, is as valuable as possible and by myself getting to a level where I feel confident to ask questions and, and engage. I remember back to uh, doing some of my some, uh, my math studies at university and it got so hard. If I didn't understand, it, I would be like, okay, I need to go home and spend five hours going back over and over and over this. You know, because I would you know, I was a little bit I was a little bit timid, so I didn't want to actually ask a question about it. Whereas had I had a chance to have the Khan Academy and watch some of those videos, I could have come in there at a level where I could have actually wanted to engage and ask questions and sit there with Clary and say, okay, Clary, you can tell me a bit, tell me a bit about, uh, about this particular, uh, particular component. So obviously, uh, very important for you know, being able to individualize and, and differenti differentiate uh, the learning for your students, which is obviously a, 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 key, a key component. It's a very quick, quick survey that, uh, that's obviously relatively, uh, relatively recent of some students working, working through, a, through a, flipped, uh, uh, a flipped experience. And I think um, you know, overall, we can see a very, a very positive, positive response um, to, you know, to their attitude um, towards a flipped, a flipped classroom environment. And to pick up on, on some of the comments, um, uh, John, I think it was Josh's comment again about um, students actually not understanding. And I think that's part of the role of an educator is to actually um, to, pick, to, to pitch it to students, to say, well, this is not about me just sort of heading off and you're just going to look at me on videos and we'll never see each other. It's actually about the times that we see each other being so much more, uh, so much more valuable and we can get a lot, more, a lot more out of it. So I think once students understand where it's at um, and understand their requirements to, and what they need to do to be part of that, then they really, uh, really, really, really work well with it. One final video that I'm just going to um, flip forward to minute 11. This is Sel, Sel Khan from the Khan Academy. Uh, I'm going to ask, hands up if anyone doesn't know the Khan, Khan Academy. I think that's probably, um, we need to find the rock that we're living under if that's the, uh, if that's the case. So, so basically this is, um, this is his TED talk. So you can go and have a look at the, the TED talk, it's, it's there. He's gone through and he's talked about what the Khan Academy is about. He's talked about how it's, you know, it's network of learning that they're establishing in there. But I thought he was the, 
Here was the, uh, a good point that I just wanted just to play two minutes of. Let's forget it's K to 12, what he's talking about. Effectively, I guess what he's, what he's saying is that we, we now have information, data, about our students, where they are, to, to pick up on, um, on the comment. Uh, just Okay, have, if, the video is one thing. But what we then can wrap around is some diagnostic, um, some diagnostic checks to sort of to understand. Okay, fundamentally, have they understood some of the core, some of the core concepts? Is there some opportunities for discussion prior to class, so that when we actually get to class and are going to be breaking off into groups, we've already seeded some of those ideas. So we can actually start to frame that up prior to prior to class, and once we've got that data, the world's our oyster in terms of how we can now start to work with those students straight away. I know. Here's my list of people that have finished, <laughs> finished the course, so, you know, that, that went through just that very simple thing that I, that I set up. And so what I, sh what I could probably do now, and we will maybe do this in a, in a sec, is we can go off into some groups and I will have each of those students leading one of those groups because they, they, they are now the green students in, in there. Now, admittedly, you, everyone else is not red because you just, we, didn't, we didn't have time to get in there and, and so forth. But it just shows that once you've, once you've got students in here working with this framework, you can then do a lot, a lot with it. So, why don't we go now and have a quick look at um, at actual at the actual environment that we set up for you guys, just to sort of see see how this is. So, this is our local um, this is our local company um, blackboard environment. This is not the Swinburne environment, but for all intents and purposes, what it does should be just about the same. It might look a little bit uh, a little bit different. So, for you guys, um, and now I was at my wife's mother's house, so if you're wondering about all these, all these frilly curtains and, and this sort of stuff, I was sort of like, because I was, yeah, I, I, had to, I had to quickly record the video the other day and I was, I was over there, so no, we don't, yeah, it's nice, it's the Paris picture in the back. So what I did there was I, I recorded a, qu a quick introduction, how many people got a chance just to, to play it? It sounded pretty bad, it was done in, a, done in a big hurry, but you can do that directly from your computer. You, know, you have all of the technology to be able to capture a video artifact and bring it directly into that. Now that might not be, that's probably not appropriate for you to, um, maybe, to actually teach a concept, but to maybe introduce it or to set the scene for something that, that your students are going to be working through. So that's, that's there and there. So I'm probably not going to work through today as being, I guess, training as such, because I think, John, we have a deeper deep dive. In well, we're having another session, but it's kind of more for a similar type of thing. So we're not going to go deep into it. Yes. Yeah, so, so look, more than happy afterwards if you say, oh, Chris, how do you do that? More than happy to sort of stay and, and answer those questions, but probably, um, probably we can just sort of have a, have a quick look here. So what we've got there is the, obviously the introduction. So then we come into our, into our learning here, and we can obviously now start to see, just, I just chose one, one thing. We've got our introduction to the, introduction to the flipped classroom. So I think to, um, oh, sorry, I forgot your name just down there. Me? Yeah, because yeah, you, you did a flip of the flip classroom, didn't you? So, so same, sort of, same sort of thing. So here was the 60 second video and I've heard a couple of people say that, yep, that was, that, that was resonating. Yep, it was 60 seconds and it, and it got some core concepts across. So what I've done here is I've actually paused. Yeah, if, if you think of this learning experience, I've put, a, I guess, a, a line in the sand here. So unless a student actually comes and sort of says, yeah, fundamentally, I've looked at it. I've watched it. Okay. Until they do that, until they click that mark reviewed, they can't move on to the next step. So straight away for me as an educator, that tells me where half of my cohort, you know, if 20 minutes before class and I'm heading in and I'm going, okay, I'm going to have a problem here, half of these guys have fundamentally not even looked at it. Okay? Now by sort of stopping them from seeing more down the track, we're now able to actually get that, get that insight. So that's obviously one, one area. And then as, we, you know, as, as you saw, we had some more, some more, resources, some, some more resources in here. Um, you, we've seen these, um, seen these just before. Just to pick up, I'd Im I embedded a Prezi presentation directly, uh, directly into, the, into the site here. So that would have taken a user through for experiencing that particular presentation. And we continue on, I mark that, mark that reviewed, reviewed again and, and we, we now start to see more, more open up. We've got some readings. Now what I've introduced is, is a discussion. Okay, so this was now starting to sort of Actually, actually, ask the students to start to say, "Well, what does this what does this really mean for you?" Okay, so we can click into the discussion. Is everyone familiar with the core discussion framework within within Blackboard? Fantastic! So it's nice and nice and easy to easy to do. I can click to launch uh, launch the discussion. Now I am logged in here as an educator, so I'm sort of seeing um, uh, four of our four of our students that uh, that have have published. I think when I left home 
home this morning there was uh, two, so we've had another two, another two, two since there. So that's so that's fantastic. And what we've actually what we've actually asked our, our students to do is to is to think about you know what what are some of the benefits of, of flipping the classroom and maybe what might be a, an example of of a classroom or a topic or a learning sequence that they'd be thinking they would also like to like to flip. So they've put that in there, and then then we've actually encouraged as part of this. Um, this piece of work is for other students to go and ask questions about another student's um, ideas, challenge them, pose pose some pose some pose some thoughts. Now, I may actually use this uh, this 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 piece of work here may actually form a very small part of their grading, but we know that we can do that all through all through through the framework. So again, there's another call to action that you know, okay, it might be a very small grade for this one, and students can maybe miss one. And I've heard of I've heard of educators saying, all right, well, I'll drop the bottom six. We know that there's going to be some that you just may not be able to get, get done. So of the semester, if there's um, 20, we'll take away the, the, bottom, the bottom X that you didn't do, but the rest will, be, will become part of your formal grade. So again, there's actually a call to action now for them to, to be in here working, discussing, and, and so forth. So if we were to think about, and I know mobile is, a, is obviously a big, uh, a big component of anything we need to be, to be looking at. If I was thinking, I'm just going to pull this little iPad iPad out here for a sec. Where's my iPad gone? Just let me just enable my. Um, how many people have used Black the mobile learning application? Cool, great. So that's effectively what I'm doing now. There's my, there's my iPad, wireless. That's the that's the learning experience. Let's not uh, flip it around too much. So we come into our, our Swinburne flip classroom. So you just think of this as your 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 subjects or your units that you're that you're working through. We know I've got our class discussions in here. So there's a, there's the discussion discussion topic that was that was posed. And I can come in here. So we're obviously wanting to encourage our students to engage, not not just engage on a Sunday night when with all of their subjects, but let's let's be iteratively working through through this framework. Let's be getting lots of lots of input over over time. So the first thing to note, actually, let me just go back a sec. The first thing to note, you saw all of those posts on the screen. So there's actually four people that have, have worked in the discussion board. But I'm in here, and there's, there's none. So as an educator, I've chosen an option that I'd actually like students to engage with the discussion forum first, give me an understanding of where they are today, then start to build their, build their, their understanding before, I guess, they sort of hunt around and maybe gather, gather opinion from what else, is, what else is in there. So this is actually a setting that an educator can, can choose. So I'm actually logged in as my wife. Uh, I've, I'm logged in here as an educator. I'm logged in as my wife um, over here. She, my wife is, a, is an educator. So she has been, um, been uh, thinking about um, uh, ideas on my flip. Um, she's, you know, she's putting some, some stuff in there, etc. But we know that the power of a mobile device is, oops, is not um, is obviously well, how quickly we can, we can interact, but some of the rich applications that are available on a mobile device. So I might be doing some, some mind mapping in an application. Yeah, how many different applications are there for mind mapping on these things? There's probably hundreds. You know? There's application for this. I might do explain everything to create a little video sequence of what I'd like to, like to do. So the world is, is, our, is our oyster. So I can come in here and go and grab an attachment. I'm just going to go to my library because I do have an existing uh, this little, uh, little existing map just down there, and I can post that in, and that will now be s be sent back to the back to the discussion discussion space, and that's now there an art uh, that's now there as a as a place where obviously I can get my educator to to come in and provide me some of their thoughts on it, but also my fellow my my peers my my fellow students can also be coming in to work to work with that uh, with that uh, with that uh, those ideas there. Now we can see the rest of the discussion board. Here's Josh's, Josh's ideas, so obviously put in, put in there. Um, I can also come back in and start to work with, work with my other, my other um, peers in, in that space just there. So now we can see you know, the, the, the real power of, I guess, what, what mobile is going to, going to bring back to, the, back to the framework. Because of course, it's, you know, if we go back into our, into our learning site, introduction to the flipped classroom, what a flipped classroom is and isn't. Um, sorry, I should have done the 60 seconds one. Of course, we know that our students, they'll be out and about. They'll be on there, on the train, wherever, waiting for something. Got, got, got half an hour free. Well, there's the video. So we want you know the mo the mobile device to bring all of that uh, back very easily, easily for them. This 
has been a Swinburne production.